Market my 18. <laughs> Market the 18 hit. All right, you ready? Oh. Mark 18, rise three in three, two, one. Hey everybody, thanks again for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode with Eric and Roy. And today we're gonna to be reviewing the Daniel Defense Mark 18 Rise 3. Uh, before we get into everything, go ahead to the like and subscribe button. It really does help us out. And let's go ahead and go with a disclaimer. Yeah, disclaimer is this rifle was provided to us by none other than AAA Gun and Ammo. Yeah, gunandammoshop.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a registered SBR. For all of you out there, registered registered SBR. It is on my SOT, is where it is. So it is not a pistol. Uh, it was an SBR straight from Daniel Defense to us here at the shop. So specs. Yeah. All right. So everybody's big question: What is the cost? So the MSRP on this bad boy is two thousand two hundred and forty dollars, and the street prices. $2,240. <laughs> no, no change. You, you, you'll probably find it. You might find it a little better deal than that. Uh, yeah. If you hit up uh, hit up Gunbroker or something like that, you'll probably yeah. pay three Gs. Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> you get to pay more money. <laughs> yeah. The uh, I mean, it's a pretty new gun. So, yeah, it's going to yeah. be pretty... Long pretty awaited. No, so, uh, if you're familiar with the specs of the Mark 18, as far as internally wise goes, it's pretty much exactly the same as what mm -hmm. prior versions of the Mark 18 was from Daniel Defense. 10.3 inch cold hammer forged barrel. Um, typically comes with uh, Daniel Defense's normal mil spec parts kit inside of it, like yeah. their normal mil spec trigger. Comes with their ambidextrous charging handle. Yeah. Uh, ambidextrous safety selector mm -hmm. on the normal Mark 18, and then from there, the improvements that they have uh, yeah, I mean, they come act, forward with. I mean, like, like you said, cold hammer forged barrel, government profile barrel, um, obviously carbine length. It does come with their flash hider, so their flash okay. suppressor yep. is what they call it. Uh, overall length is 26 and 3 quarter inches with a weight of 5.73 pounds. It has the new Rise 3 rail, which is actually at 9.5 <laughs> inches for the 10.3, and ambidextrous controls. So what is the Rise 3 rail, So yeah. for those that don't know? It's going to be, what, M-Lock, right? Yeah. 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 So the Rise 3 is no longer going to be picatinny like the Rise 2. It is going to be uh, an M-Lock. Yeah. Uh, and they did a pretty good job of kind of putting it at all different angles. Um, but and obviously the lockup is... And she's beefy. Dude, she's beefy. She is thick. She's thick. With two Cs. Yeah. Thick. Thick. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, as far as the... Uh, the Mark 18, it's 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 a Mark 18. It's, and you know, it comes with a standard, uh, you know, Daniel Defense furniture, which is immediately removed. Yeah, and I would highly suggest the very first thing that you do the moment that you get a Daniel Defense Mark 18 or any Daniel Defense rifle, if you choose to invest in Daniel Defense. But that being said, <laughs> uh, I would remove, uh, I would remove their crappy furniture. Okay, uh, this is our unbiased opinion. Yeah, their furniture is garbage. Uh, I hate it. Uh, I hate everything about it. So get rid of that furniture. Uh, get yourself whatever you prefer, whether that is B5 or Magpul. There's tons of companies out there, Bravo Company. Mm -hmm. Buy your furniture that you choose to do so. Yeah. Uh, as far as some added features to the RIS-3, outside of changing the rail, uh, what Daniel Defense did to it is they went ahead and made the gun fully ambidextrous. Yeah. Meaning that you do now have full Ambi controls on both sides. You can release the magazine on both sides. Uh, Eric being a lefty, he obviously appreciates that. Oh yeah, 100%. Uh, me being normal as a righty and not a weirdo. Hey, genius. <laughs> South Paws uh, are genius. South Falls are genius. That's still up for debate. Special. <laughs> Special. Uh, but full, full bolt lock back mm -hmm. on both sides yeah. and bolt release. They've always provided the ambidextrous uh, charging handle and the ambidextrous safety which I think is kind of standard. Yeah. I, I think most even law enforcement, DOD contract, military contract, that's a, kind of a requirement now. Yeah. The new yeah. M4s actually come 
you know, the standard M4 for the Army and the military comes with ambidextrous controls. Yeah, now. yeah. so, but they don't have full lock, bolt lock back. No, just the ambidextrous risk. safety. Yep, just yeah. ambidextrous safety and, and charging mm -hmm. handles now, so yep. that's very common. Uh, standard carbine length as far as the um, buffer tube. Yeah. And yeah, it was a six position. Yep, standard yep. carbine spring inside and... Or not six position. It's, yeah. um... Yeah, six position. Yeah, six yeah. position. Yeah. Um, um, and a standard carbine spring in the inside mm -hmm. and a H2 buffer. So, yep, so. yep. Yeah, I mean, as far as the, the what's really spe 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 special about the rail is obviously they're building it for that SOCOM legacy. Mm -hmm. So being able to remove the bottom part of that rail uh, and actually slide an M203 grenade launcher on there and still make it a free-floating system. So that's why this lockup in this rail is so beefy. It was with the Rise 2, it is with the Rise 3, is because that, that grenade launcher being put on the bottom uh, allows the gun to still be free float, which is a big deal. Um, as far as the, the bolt and stuff like that, uh, you know, can you talk a little bit about why shorter guns are gassy? Like what is the what is the intent of companies making guns more gassy versus more Well, regular? I mean, it's inherently um, unpreventable to be able to do it on something where you shorten a barrel down this yeah. far, where we're, we're getting into that 10 and a half, 10.3 length, which is really your minimum length that you want to run a 5.56. Five, mm -hmm. uh, you're starting to kill a lot of the velocity. You can kind of gain some of that um, some of that energy back by specializing your ammo to like Mark 262, 77 grain. Right. Uh, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can gain some distance back as far as capability with it. But outside of that, uh, they're going to be naturally over gas. Uh, we have a carbine length gas system, and we're cutting that dwell time down a quite a bit, meaning right. where the gas port is and how much barrel length that you have to create back pressure coming back. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, The more dwell time that you have, the smaller the port for the gas to come back into the carrier itself, uh, you can go with. But in this particular situation, they obviously have to run a larger gas port to really allow as much of that gas to go straight into that gas block and come back through the tube and hit your bolt carrier so it'll cycle properly. So have more reliability. Yeah, more reliability. Yeah. Uh, that's the way it's designed to run. Um, this gun runs absolutely perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever across the board with pretty much almost any ammunition that you choose to feed yeah. through it. Mm -hmm. uh, that can be steel case ammo, that can be 855, that can be XM193 yep. of any variant. It can be your Lake City or AKA your Winchester stuff. Mm -hmm. And also A1. <laughs> yeah, A1. So uh, it eats A1 just fine. But she is gassy. <sighs> Completely gassy. So being that it is a little gassy, one of the things that we did pretty quick and immediately is uh, we ran the Geisley charging handle. Mm -hmm. uh, I happen to like the Geisley charging handle. Uh, it, it breaks up quite a bit of gas yeah. back in your face. Uh, I know Radiant Arms has their, their, their charging handle mm -hmm. that kind of does a very similar thing, and there's a few other, other companies do. We prefer the Geisley, and we find that it does the best job of it. Yeah. So we did change out uh, Daniel Defense's charging handle. The other thing that we changed out inside of here was we went to a Geisley SSAE two-stage trigger. Yeah. Um, we run that trigger most mm -hmm. of our guns, or mm -hmm. at least some variant that's pretty close to that. Uh, as of lately, we've been running a lot of the LaRue triggers because uh, they're much more affordable, and LaRue Tactical is a much cooler company than Geisley. But <laughs> Which, yeah, the LaRue triggers, by <laughs> so, the way, if you get a chance to pick one up or yeah. go on AAA's site and yeah. and pick one up, it is a awesome, yeah, you a got, great you deal. Yeah, you got $100 in your trigger. Yeah. And they, they're constantly doing deals where you buy a five-pack or something like that or yeah. a three-pack, and you're getting them for like $79. So that's a phenomenal trigger. Uh, the Centurion Arms two-stage trigger is also really good. I okay. like that one. So you don't necessarily have to go with the Geisley two-stage. It's just what we chose to go with because it's what we had laying around when we were taking a bar, another gun to build out this gun. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, so we don't have to take guns apart to build out other guns for you guys to review. The best way to support us is to come and train with hey, us. Hey, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> yeah. That way we can get parts and just have them dedicated. Just have them dedicated yeah. to our guns so we're not constantly ripping optics off of guns and flashlights and lasers. Uh, <laughs> uh, flashlights. Sometimes uh, when it comes to reviewing a, a, a gun, guys, uh, we're, we're not big money around here. We're not big <laughs> time. <laughs> we are scavenging parts We're scavenging off parts off yeah. of other guns yeah. and robbing things together. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so if you guys want to support us so we can leave our guns outfitted yeah. so we don't have to rip them apart, come and train with us. Yeah. Uh, you're going to get a lot of value out of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, jump on our website. Uh, pick up a ghost rig. Pick up a hat. Mm -hmm. Pick up a t-shirt. A tumbler. We got patches coming along the way. Yeah. Uh, you guys have been asking for patches for a long time. So come, come and train with us. We offer several different types of classes. We got our pistol classes. We got a clandestine carry, our concealed carry type class. Uh, we have a red dot pistol class where we're pushing performance. Mm -hmm. Performance a, and speed. Yep, performance and speed with the RDS. We have our general purpose rifle where we're really breaking down the mechanics of the rifle uh, and manipulation and showing you what you can do 
with your typical normal system that you have, however your rifle is set up. You are able to come to this class, whatever you want to run, yeah. you come, and we're going to show you that you can be capable, even to out to potentially distance yeah. um, uh, with, with that rifle. And then we have our scope carbine class, probably one of my favorite classes to teach. That's kind of my realm. That's where I find uh, my lane, where mm -hmm. I like to drive down mm -hmm. and stay in, where we're really pushing your, your rifle uh, with magnified optics, um, preferably mill reticle optics, out to extended distance as far as we can push that round yeah. uh, to go. And a standard ball too. Standard so, ball. Yeah. And then Eric's favorite class. <clears throat> the night vision class. Yeah. And that's also sponsored by Advanced Night Vision. So if you don't have night vision, yeah. you're thinking about getting into it, we have rentals. So yep. that way you can actually try and train before you buy. But that is the biggest way to help support us. We don't have Patreon. We yep. don't have you know, all these other things. So if you want to, come train with us. If you yeah. want to get your hands on the Mark 18 and try it out, see what you yep. think, uh, we will have it in, you know, a class yeah. that it's going it to be so, in. So. It is so humbling to have uh, our viewers to come out and oh, actually yeah. take the top opportunity cool. to, to, to shoot with us and train with us. Uh, we, we really do appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, so, you know, uh, the, the best way to support us, we constantly get the question all the time is, hey, how, you know, do you guys got a Patreon? Do you have something like that? No, we don't have that. But we'd have a website that we would like for you to invest in yourself and come out and train with us. Yeah, so, 100%. But yeah. And, yeah, I mean, as far as going out to with the performance of this, we actually just ran it in the GPR class that we had last week. Yeah. Um, so we did, I did put the H3 buffer in this, so kind of slow that bolt down a yeah. little bit. Um, anything I could do to kind of help regulate a little bit of gas for so it's me not as quite so punchy yeah um yeah. one of the things about the shorter system is you're definitely going to be a little bit more punchy and that's, yeah. you just inherently have to accept that yeah. that's all there is to it what is the mark 18 designed for at the end of the day it's meant for like like vehicle stuff yeah. cqb shorter work uh, more urban type scenarios so mm -hmm. like it's a lot more maneuverable because of its small size um but yeah i mean we were running we were running the surefire rc2 on there yep um and when we ran, we tried the mini. We tried the mini. We tried the mini. Uh, we did try the mini. That's, yeah. So that's let's leave that there. We tried the mini. <laughs> we tried the mini, and uh, then we went to the RC2. Then we went to the RC2. Uh, just just primarily with the mini to just save a little bit of that muzzle weight. Yeah. Because uh, she is a chunky girl. Uh, yeah. She really is. She's beefy. Uh, she is beefy, uh, which I like. I do mm -hmm. like that. It, it it does cut down uh, on a little bit of that recoil, mm -hmm. but you also know when you grab a hold of this thing. That that rail is not moving. It's solid. Like you can go with serious, just just even like the Riz two. You you can go and say that you know that that your optics up here, your lasers, yeah. your aiming devices are not going to move. Yeah, and that's a that's a big yeah. important thing about your rails. The stiffer and more reliable, like yeah. harder they are, the more that your optic mounted lasers and your sights and stuff like that will stay. I zero. would highly buy this rail. Oh, a hundred percent. I would definitely buy this rail. I probably wouldn't buy the rifle. Yeah. Um, I would probably just build myself a mm -hmm. Mark 18. Yeah. Uh, picking out, uh, you know, picking out some, you know, different parts and yeah. barrels and, and I stuff mean, like that. From even the companies. ambidextrous controls was yeah. was good. Yep. But, but I, I've I mean, been there's, used there's to tons, that. There's tons yeah. of companies out there. You don't need the ambi controls. Yeah. But there's other companies out there that build ambi lowers. If right. You want, if you want the ambi, like the American Defense lower right. LMT. Uh, so there's a lot of great companies out there that build them. But this rail, though, man, it, let me tell you what. Uh, that's the most impressive part about this rifle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you when you pick it up, whether you have this version of it, you have the 14.5 version. It is just solid. It's a fighting rifle. Yeah, it is a, it fighting, is a fighting rifle. Fighting you rifle. know you have a rifle in your hand mm -hmm. that's that's meant to punch out and go to work. <laughs> yeah, go to work. <laughs> go to work. And it, it's also got QDs too, so it yeah. has built-in QD, which is nice. That's honestly one of those things where it's like. It should be a standard now. Yeah, it's definitely um, should be. And uh, I do wish, though, um, they did the QDs on the backside right here, yeah, more towards, towards the, the front, yeah. more towards the front and the receiver. Which I understand why, because just like what we have going on up here, mm -hmm. we have a ton of stuff. We have a IR laser illuminator, have a, a, a white light, and actually another IR uh, illuminator, illuminator. Uh, another Malikov, IR illuminator, yeah. a Malakoff head that we're just kind of experimenting mm -hmm. around with and seeing how how good it is. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I still wish that there was some type of QD uh, position up here. Uh, we did add one yeah. up here towards the front of it. Uh, that's how we both prefer to run our slings yeah. at the longest points mm -hmm. of contact from yep. the front to the rear. Um, but there's a lot of people that run it here. Yeah, so. and you have the option. And there's right. also a QD plate where the uh, buffer is. There's one yep. on the back. Yeah, so. so if you prefer to run back here <laughs> yeah. um, like a weirdo, you can definitely go ahead and do so. <laughs> <laughs> from my single point sling, so. Boas. From a uh, single point sling. Yeah, if I you mean, like beating yourself in the testicles, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> run your single yeah. point sling. So. It's, I mean, overall, as you can expect, a Mark 
Mark 18 is a Mark 18. It's going to yeah, run. Yeah, there's really no difference yeah. uh, from from the run. from the RIS 2 to this rifle, for the exception of that rail change, um, the ambidextrous full controls mm -hmm. that you have in it now. It's it's typical rifle. Yeah. Um, what did you think as far as probably when we changed over? And I know we did a review on this, but you're running the RC2 and mm -hmm. then you ran the Huxworks on. The for those that didn't watch the Huxrux video, if you're watching this now, take a step back. Click, Go watch click that somewhere one. up in here. Eric's going to figure out how to do that. <laughs> Maybe over there. We'll do it over yeah, there. there's over here. Watch uh, it pop up. Yeah, on watch this it up over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Go I, watch the Huxworks, but yeah. for those that didn't, the Huxworks flow through. It was the Mark 18 running it with the RC2. It was just painful because of the amount of gas. And yeah. I understand, like we talked about earlier, having that reliability, but the downfall is the overgassing. And for a Southpaw, even for you, when you yeah. ran it, yeah. you were just getting so much gas in your face. And we were doing everything we possibly could to try and break that up from the charging handle to slowing the bolt down, everything that we could try and think of. Um, I actually ran it unsuppressed at one point just because I was tired of running the suppressor and it blew off a light cap so yeah. like oh um, yeah there's a lot of concussion there yeah, if you're just, getting down around the ground um, it's a lot you're working VTAC barricades stuff like that getting down into those small ports if you don't have a can on this gun you're going to be just blasted out with yeah. even with a flash hider on yeah. it uh, just so much uh, with that short barrel you can't get it far enough away mm -hmm. from you so yeah. you're going to kick up a ton of dust so suppressed is the only way to run this gun yeah I don't believe that there's any other way uh, no. if you have a mark 18 and you don't have a suppressor I would suggest that you pick up a Hux Works yeah. for it. And this is this can, in that video, other video we talk about, the, this this Hux Works can, it completely regulated this yeah. to almost a completely different gun. If I gave this gun to you with the Hux Works, yeah. you'd be like, oh, what'd you put inside of it to regulate? Is there an adjustable gas block? And it's like, oh. That is no gas. If no, I was building, can't. if I was building a dedicated system like a Mark 18 that yeah. I was going to run suppressed all the time, which AK you should, um, it would be exactly how we have it currently yeah. configured. That is with the Huxworks can on it. Yeah. Uh, that is probably the best way, in my personal opinion. Uh, as of right now, that may change here in the future as other companies develop cans. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody else may come out with something better. What did you think as far as the Mark 18? As far as finding value, we haven't ran a Mark 18 in a while. Yeah. Is it something that you in 2023 in our current society uh, where we where we're seeing a lot of individuals running longer rifles again, mm, where we're yeah. seeing that uh, that 13, 7, 13, 9, 14, 5, even 16 inch guns yeah. and even 18 inch guns, yeah. um, wanting that capability of being able to push bullets further with out. good amount of energy yeah. further downrange. What do you do? You still find value in this system? I do, and the reason why I say that is because it's still about the compact size and maneuverability. Yeah. Like if I was like, the shortest gun that we were running before was 11.5 and 12.5. So those were yeah, our we two, have actually moved two short to pretty ones, much 12.5. Yeah. 12.5. 12.5s five, yeah. 12 have been our, our go to go to mm -hmm. uh, length, and um, man, it's still even though this thing's punchy. It's got so it, you can see you you can, can, it's you a can lot just, smaller. It's package. a lot smaller. Yeah. Like uh, it's only a few inches. Yeah, but it, it, it but makes a difference. In this particular situation, I know not all walks of the world that a few inches makes a difference, but in here, yeah, with this, <laughs> the less inches the better. Yeah, the so less. like it was it, it, as far as maneuverability, you can definitely feel like I have a lot more. Uh, maneuverability with this, I can get into yeah. tighter spaces, yep. getting in and out of vehicles. We actually uh, did some vehicle drills with it and got in and out of vehicles, and it was a lot smaller package with the same amount of punch. And if you're running 77 grain, yeah. like you're really not losing velocity. Yeah, there. we get this question. I get this question quite a bit, um, especially as people come and visit us in the shop. Mm -hmm. As far as like, hey, what ammo, Roy, Eric, what ammo should I should I stock up on? Yeah. Hey, first off, 77 grain Mark 262 is extremely expensive. Yeah. So I'm not telling you to go stock up stock up on it, but it makes every rifle better. It does. It yeah, really completely does. different. Gun. <clears throat> completely different gun. So if you have the funding and you have the ability to do so, or to find something very, very similar to it, where mm -hmm. you have an open tip type round like that, <clears throat> that you can run a 75 grain or 77 yeah. grain. By all means, I would highly suggest Run keeping it. keeping this rifle in your toolbox. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I, it's short. It's compact. It's very, very comfortable to move her around with. It, yeah. She is punchy. She is heavy for her size. Yeah, but um, but it's still a pleasure. You know what's to funny? have a short gun sometimes outside of you know uh, just running long guns all the time. What's funny is <clears throat> is also we go kind of back to this recce type yeah. thing, and that is a. You know, looking back and talking to some kind of older Lurse guys and Recce guys, those guys were running short guns, especially in those thicker jungle type environments. You wanted something short, yeah. less snags on vines and stuff like so that. So we did, uh, so you did, uh, <laughs> when you set up uh, 
that uh, kind of that Ricky uh, scenario for myself, oh, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> for Chris for Chris dying. and uh, and Zach, and uh, uh, and I and I chose to carry the the Mark Twelve. Very short. Yes. Very <laughs> short gun. <laughs> Very compact. Yeah, yeah. And F Florida is a jungle. It is a jungle. Especially where we're at. It is very, very mm -hmm. thick, uh, some of our areas. And let me tell you, I would have gave everything for a <laughs> yeah, Mark 18, Mark 18. <laughs> to carry that yeah. instead of that freaking Mark oh, 12. Yeah. As much as I love the Mark 12, mm -hmm. maneuvering around all those vines and how thick it was and stuff yeah. like that. So it, it does have a field where it plays more roles outside of just a CQB situation. 100%. If you're in a really, really heavy, thick environment, yeah. I think having that little bit shorter compact gun, uh, of course, I would have probably been fine with a 12.5 mm -hmm. or 11.5 also at the same time. I think there's still room in the toolbox for it. I agree. Uh, to be honest with you, um, I don't currently own one. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, this was basically, uh, like I said, to us from the shop. Uh, we'll continue to run it, mm -hmm. so it'll be in our, you know, barrel and hatchet arsenal for a little while. Um, and I may may decide to put one together. Yeah, I, I do like this rail though. Yeah. I really do. Um, the rail lockup is awesome, and I think the biggest thing to really take away from this is shorter rifles still do have a place. I yeah. think the Mark 18 with that 10-3 barrel is about as short as you can go without sacrificing tons yep. of accuracy and reliability, but they do have a place and it shouldn't be dismissed. Yeah. Um, especially, I mean, I know 300 Blackout is awesome, but 5.56 five, is everywhere, yep. you know, it's everywhere. So yeah, it basing is. a system off of ammo that you can readily and easily find uh, is a good and important thing to think about. And also this gun completely transforms when you put on this a, a flow through type can. Yeah. It really does change the gun, um, but I think it still has a place. Yeah, I do. I think it still has a place. Also, I agree 100%. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, really nothing bad to per se about it besides it being a Daniel Defense. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, you can do all your research and stuff like that, but you still have to go out and put in trigger yep. time. You still yep. got to go out and train. Uh, arguing <clears throat> on the internet is not going to do anything for you. Like I said, we're you, me and Roy, we're just giving you our opinions, but at the end of the day, you need to go out and, and put some work behind your system that you're currently running. Um, and also, if you want to get your hands on this, come take a class with us. We'd, we'd love to you know, let you try it out and see what you think. And uh, if you have a Mark 18 or you have a Rice 3 and you have any comments about yeah. your experiences, throw them below. Help the community uh, you know, learn off of what your experiences are. But. Any yeah. Final words. No. Um, not crapping on any offense, guys. I know I've said the same. I'm just joking around. Uh, I'm sure they're okay company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daniel. Oh, Daniel. You're freaking. Oh, Marty. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Jason and Rice. Oh, but man. yeah. Anyways, guys. Thanks again for checking out their Hatchetcast episode. If you don't already, go follow our Instagram page for any behind the scenes and also our pictures. Yep. Uh, as well as our Spotify, we have guest only episodes where we interview about mindset and preparedness. And also, any video that's on YouTube is also on Rumble. So uh, if you want to go check out Rumble, Rumble you can go check that out. Uh, some videos that is used Rumble to be free. On, it is. All of our stuff's free. Yeah. But, yeah. but okay, so Rumble is free. Yeah, yeah, it's all free. Cool. All right, well, go check it out and go train. All right, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>